Hello everyone, this is Scott with Data Network Group. Today I'm going to be showing you a more advanced tutorial here on how to use Opsiloft on an iPad um, or an iOS device really. I'm going to recommend that you only do this if you absolutely need to and you're an advanced iOS user. The current software that they have available as of making this video is still quite glitchy. Uh, it doesn't really work as great as it could. So really only use this if you're in a pinch or uh, if you know what you're doing. So. What we're going to do here is we're going to search for the Citrix receiver application on the App Store. We can just go into the search results here and we're just going to download the application. Alright, now that the application is downloaded, we're going to go ahead and launch it for the first time here and it's going to be uh, asking us to add our account. So go ahead and tip the Add Account button and enter in portal.opsiloft.com. You can go ahead and hit the Next button. And then we're going to enter in the same credentials here that we use for our Opsiloft web page. And for the domain, this is your company code. Uh, you can generally find this at the top of the web page after you sign in. It'll be your username dot your company code. So go ahead and enter in that as the domain and hit save. And if you did everything properly, you'll be taken to this screen here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click the plus sign on the left side to bring out this drawer. It'll show us our available applications. So just for the grins of this video, I'm going to add uh, file manager. Chrome, and let's go with Word. So now we've got the icons right on our screen here and we can just launch these applications directly from here. Currently they're throwing up this application uh, every time I try and launch it the first time. Basically after I click it the first time and relaunch it, it seems to work fine. So I've just been uh, ignoring that message for the time being. Could be a bug with the application, I'm not entirely sure. And once the app loads up, it'll automatically bring up the keyboard. Uh, you can press the button on the bottom right to hide that keyboard. And we can start with a blank document if we want. And you can tap around just like you would normally on the computer, but just with your finger instead of a mouse. Uh, if we need to get the keyboard back, we've got a drawer up at the top, that little black arrow up there. We can press that, and that'll show us some of our different options. So I'm going to just click the keyboard. That'll bring that back up. And then you can just start typing. And if you need to select some text in here, you can hold down your finger by where you want to select and then just click and drag essentially. And just press the bold button or if you want to change colors or whatever the case might be. Uh, if you need to do a right click, um, go ahead and select whatever you need and then hold down on the screen and that'll bring up your right click menu. Uh, so if we need to cut something, uh, it's not really the like I said, not the most intuitive thing, uh, definitely for advanced users. You've also got the cut, copy, and paste options right on the keyboard here to make it a little bit easier. So like I was saying, this is really meant for just advanced users. Uh, if you know what you're doing or if you only want to use one application at a time, this is probably going to work great for you, but it is not the best software at the moment, so use it sparingly uh, and don't expect great things from it. But Regardless, this is how you can set it up on your iPad and then uh, just launching back up into Citrix Receiver every time will reconnect you to wherever you had open or if you just need to reopen your apps from fresh, that's what it'll look like. So if you ever need to add any more applications again, just open up your side drawer and tap the plus sign or you can remove applications by unchecking the checkbox. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.